Hello and welcome. I'm Hilary Viner, CEO of Genius 100 Foundation. On behalf of the extraordinary Genius 100 team, founder Rami Kleinman, Global Ambassador Ido Aharoni, and Chief Community Officer Helen Hatzis, thank you so much for making the time to join us, either for the first time or again, for this very special Genius 100 Foundation event. We're delighted and honored to see so many Genius 100 visionaries and members of the Genius 100 community from so many places around the world. And I especially want to welcome our very special guests from Miss Golden's classes from Palm Middle School in Los Angeles. Today's program zeroes in on what is at the very core of Genius 100 as our entire entity is based on being inspired by Einstein. As a matter of fact, Genius 100 was literally created as a way to honor the centennial celebration of Einstein's theory of relativity. The discussion that will begin in just a few minutes will be focused on the in-production film, Einstein's Incredible Universe, which we at Genius 100 are proudly part of the team of executive producers with Cosmic Picture. I don't want to take away anything from the content you're about to hear, which includes science, space, black holes, eclipses, just that it's very, very cool stuff. What I do want to say is we can talk about going back to theaters, science centers, schools, and well, life, because of the study of and implementation of science. The film that we're talking about today will inspire many thousands of young minds around the globe, the impact opportunity of which is simply astounding. So we have a lot of ground to cover in the next hour. First, we'll hear from a distinguished member of the G100 community and Cosmic Picture co-founder, Taryn Davies, whom I will formally introduce in just a few minutes. Then Taryn will hand things off to Ambassador Ido Aharoni and Daniel Ferguson, writer and director of Einstein's Incredible Universe and many other extraordinary films, for a one-on-one -on -one in depth conversation about the making of the film. And don't worry, we didn't forget about you. We'll be fielding questions from the audience at the conclusion of Ido and Daniel's conversation. So please don't forget to submit questions via the Q&A option located within your Zoom panel. At the conclusion of the Q&A, we'll hear from our esteemed G100 Einstein's Incredible Universe Chairperson, Mona Oweski, and co-executive producer, Matt Rotondo, on how you can get involved with this truly extraordinary project. And then finally, back to me to close things out and share some, you heard it here first, special announcements. Now it's my great pleasure to introduce Taryn. Taryn co-founded Cosmic Pictures, in, 20, in 2004 and conceived and produced the award-winning IMAX documentary, Journey to Mecca, and the giant screen movie, Jerusalem. Born in New York City and raised in London and Hong Kong, he graduated from Harvard University in 1993, where he studied filmmaking. He briefly worked in finance and venture cap in New York before, thankfully, returning to film. Welcome, Taryn. Thank you so much, Hillary. Uh, I can't say how excited I am. We are to be here to introduce our next project to you. Um, Einstein's incredible universe. This is a dream, uh, a dream for us. And it's also a great honor to be back uh, working with our dear friends uh, led by Rami, uh, who we've worked with before on our IMAX project Jerusalem, more about um, soon. Uh, there's no one better on earth to be working with to make dreams a reality um, than Rami and his team at Genius 100. Can we have the first slide, please, Helen? Aha, uh -huh. there we go. Beautiful. Because that's what we do at Cosmic Picture is the goal is to make our dreams a reality, preferably on a screen that's 80 feet uh, high. 
And we do that as producers, but also as now today distributors too. And we, we focus on the production, the marketing, educational materials, and the distribution. You know, I, IMAX really took off by taking people to space, millions of people uh, to space. And IMAX films gave people their first experience experience of what it was like to go to space. And, and that's what we do at, at Cosmic is that we create experiences. Can I have the next slide, please? Experiences that are meant to plunge audiences um, into places and events and rituals uh, that you otherwise um, cannot go to. Um, and we seek to do so always in the most unique and spectacular way possible. So take, for example, here, that this is one of our IMAX cameras above the, um, the priestly blessing at the Kotel at Pesach. Um, I will let you all imagine what it was like uh, to get that camera there and at that time, and to imagine what it must look like on an IMAX screen 80 feet high. Next slide, please. Um, this is a similar shot that we took with inside the, the, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre during the ceremony of the Holy Fire on Easter Saturday. Next slide, please. So whether we're in space or we're on our way to space via Jerusalem, um, of course, the goal is, at Cosmic, is to, is to create the most iconic film on any given subject that we choose to tackle. So by saying forget everything you know, I just want to reset your thinking about this subject matter. So everyone has assumptions when they see Einstein. As Taryn mentioned, the great thing about this format is the fact that uh, you, the audience, get to be the main character. So you get to travel to places you could never otherwise go to. And where do you get to go in this case? You get to go into the imagination of Albert Einstein and some of the leading astrophysicists who are building on his work at the moment of discovery. And that's what's special about this film. We begin in the summer of 2017, when millions gathered around the United States to witness the cosmic spectacle of a lifetime. Some of you may have been there as well. What I'm talking about is a total solar eclipse. This was called a catalyst for a whole new generation of potential scientists to ignite a spark of curiosity. What is it about a total eclipse that's so unique and special? And why did hundreds of people from all over the world recreate one of the most famous experiments in history? An experiment that was done over 100 years ago. This experiment changed our conception of the cosmos. And it did so by showing that starlight is actually bent by the mass of the sun to reach the Earth. It's an incredible notion. And the man who came up with the theory of this is pretty famous. You may have heard of him. We're gonna take you back to period Munich when as a five-year-old boy, Albert Einstein received a gift that would change his life. A simple pocket compass given to him by his father. And for some strange reason, the magnetic compass kept pointing north and Albert tried to understand why, what is it? What is this unseen invisible force that is making the compass do that? And that launched him on a lifelong quest where he didn't use a computer and he didn't use a laboratory. He used something even more powerful, his imagination. He asked a very simple question, what if? He performed thought experiments in his own mind. It's something that every one of us can do. Every one of us has a laboratory within our own imaginations to ask the very same question, what if? This is Andrea Goetz. She is known affectionately as the black hole hunter. From a very young age, Andrea was fascinated by these strange, mysterious objects, these phenomena, black holes, that emerged directly out of Einstein's theory, new theory of gravity. But it began very young for her. At the age of about five or six, growing up in Chicago, she recalls watching the moon landing and seeing Buzz and Neil bounce around on the surface of the moon. And she began to imagine herself bouncing around on different worlds and playing with gravity and performing thought experiments, asking the very same question that Albert asked. What is it? What about gravity? What if? Halfway around the world, at almost the exact same moment, a young girl named Nargis Malvalvala was growing up in Karachi, Pakistan. She climbed up to her rooftop apartment and she witnessed a summer meteor shower. And this absolutely transfixed her and transformed her life. She began to ask questions as well. Why, what's making this happen? What is it about gravity? She became obsessed with Albert Einstein and this led her to 
a career at MIT in the physics department, where she was one of the lead scientists in the most ambitious program ever attempted by the National Science Foundation, something that we know is the effort to detect the most elusive of thing, gravitational waves. Now, this is something that was predicted by Albert Einstein in 1917, 1916, rather, but even he never believed that we would have the technology to actually make that detection. This was something that was conceived of as impossible. And yet, these ripples in the fabric of space and time are something that Nargis and her team eventually went and detected, thus bringing Einstein's theory even further. This story weaves between the imaginations of young Albert, young Andrea, young Nargis, as Albert, as a boy, begins to reimagine gravity. Is it a force, as Isaac Newton said it was, that is moving bodies, ourselves on Earth, the sun, the Earth, the planets, and so forth? The audience gets a front row seat through some of Einstein's most iconic thought experiments, racing, a beam of light, understanding that time and space are not necessarily what we think they are. We get to experience falling through space in an elevator, a windowless elevator, and understand the equivalence of gravity and acceleration. And eventually, this leads to one of the most elegant theories ever, something that, in my opinion, is on the level of Mozart's Requiem, for example, or a great cathedral. It is a beautiful new imagination of gravity as not a force, but as something that is the consequence of mass warping space and time. It's something very difficult to get our head around, but we're going to take you there. Andrea, taking that very notion of the warping of space and time, wants to search for the elusive puzzle that there might be a super massive black hole at the center of our galaxy. And she uses the Keck telescope at the summit of Mauna Kea in Hawaii to pinpoint a location that is 26,000 light years away at the center of our galaxy, an area known as Sagittarius A. By observing the orbits of stars that are moving in bizarre, rapid ways, she begins to come up with an explanation for why there might be an object there invisible to us that weighs 4 million times our sun. And the only explanation, 25 years later, she comes up with, is the supermassive black hole that we have now identified. Why? What's it doing there? Why is it perhaps essential for life? Why is it that the center of most galaxies is a supermassive black hole. And her research eventually wins Andrea the Nobel Prize. She becomes the third woman in history ever to win the Nobel Prize for physics, and she did so in 2020. Around the same time, of course, Nargis and her team at Advanced LIGO detecting gravitational waves detect the collision of two massive black holes 1.3 billion light years ago. And since then, they've gone on to observe all kinds of cosmic phenomena that is changing our conception of the universe, something that Einstein himself could never have imagined possible. And yet, we did it through the power of imagination. We end the movie at the total solar eclipse where we brought Nargis and Andrea and their families, both of them have nine-year-old sons, to witness their very first total solar eclipse. It was incredibly emotional and absolutely sublime. And I'm pleased to announce that we were able to place 26 cameras across the path of totality to film this spectacle and explain why it changed everything in a way that audiences will connect with, whether it's your first eclipse, whether you were there in 2017, and hopefully by the time the film comes out, just prior to the next big total solar eclipse in 2024, you will be primed to understand how events like this can change everything by igniting that spark of curiosity, nurtured by a childlike sense of wonder that gets all of us, no matter what age, to ask the very same question Albert Einstein did, what if? And that is our story. Yeah, that was beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, this was a, a wonderful overview. Can you can you tell us a little bit about the the background of how how you became interested in this? Um, you just shared the essence of the movie with us. Um, can you tell us a bit more about the stars of the movie, about the the names associated with the movie? So. You know, this kind of journey began coming right out of Jerusalem for us. The response to Jerusalem was so moving to me. And this is a film that's been seen by over 5 million people. And I believe it's changed people's perception of this place in the world and why it has such a strong hold on our imagination. Uh, even I saw people who were immensely curious, didn't matter what their faith background, the ability of these films to change perception and change people's minds. And so discussions with Rami began very early, realizing that this unexplored subject of Einstein had enormous potential. Not just Einstein and what he did and who he was. It's not a historical biography. We've sort of seen those before, but using the format to, as Terence said, plunge you into the imagination. 
and to learn how to do thought experiments and how thought experiments are really at the fundamental basis of all creativity. And this is what's so amazing about the subject. So you, the audience, get to be Andrea or Nargis or Einstein. And so that for me began this exploration of the space to how can we do something that's not for television, that's not for the internet, that's for this giant canvas that gets people to reconsider Einstein, not as this sort of famous guy who did something 100 years ago, but how is Einstein relevant today um, as we move out and ask these questions in the future? And I think what we've realized over this journey, and I've met many astrophysicists, I've come to feel that Andrea and Nargis embody this, this spirit of curiosity and investigations, building on the work that Einstein has done so the film can then be relevant and hand off to the next generation I've seen kids during the total solar eclipse absolutely having their lives changed by this. It's very simple. It begins as a spark. And I would bet that most of us can find that spark in our lives, whether it's a pocket compass, whether it's the moon landing, whether it's a summer meteor shower, whether it's a total solar eclipse, and dig into that and ask, what is it about that event that sent us on a lifelong quest to understand the mysteries of the universe? And I think IMAX is the best canvas to do it. And, and the solar eclipse uh, movie, when, when is it coming out? So the total solar eclipse will be about uh, six minutes of our full film. So this is a, it's a 40 to 45 minute movie uh, that will play as with most of these films for 10 to 20 years, um, all over the world. We actually tested this with all of the museums that have a giant screen theater. And uh, it actually placed at the very top of the level of interest. So it shows us, and we have museums who are clamoring for this all the time, when is this film coming out? We filmed the total solar eclipse in 2017. So that footage is done and it is in a vault and ready, but we are lacking the necessary financing to therefore complete the film. Now that Andrea has actually won the Nobel prize, which is amazing. We have footage of her, we have footage of Nargis, we have footage of the various experiments. So we are part of the way there. And now I think this is an incredible opportunity with the next eclipse coming out in 2024 to release the film worldwide and then get the audience interested in understanding why did this eclipse back in 1919 get everyone so excited, just the way that the one in 2017 did. Why did it fire our imaginations? Let's remember, this was coming off the heels of the First World War and just out of the, the pandemic, you know, the Spanish influenza of, uh, and here comes Einstein, who comes up with the theory in 1915 uh, and 1919, it's finally proven by Arthur Eddington. And the public goes wild for this, much in the way that we saw in 2017. It shows that sometimes these moments become universal in their ability to excite us, to get ex to step outside of ourselves and to start asking the bigger questions. And I think this is a perfect opportunity to do that. Now, we have a, a very important group of people here on the call. And I'm sure that many of them are asking themselves, how can we help? How can we turn this uh, great project into a smashing success in every IMAX screen in the world? Um, so tell us about the status of the project, what is needed to complete the project, and how can we in the Genus 100 Foundation can help? Well, thank you, Ido. I will just, I'm going to turn it over to uh, two people much more equipped than I, and that's Malette and Matt to answer this. But I will just say that personally, I am raring to go. I have incredible footage already. Uh, we're not yet finished, but I have a... Uh, really a script, a narrative treatment, mapping this all out. I've got the buy-in from Andrea and Nargis and the Keck Telescope and Advanced LIGO and some of the best visual effects artists uh, and the Advanced Center for, for Supercomputing as well in Illinois with the most stunning graphics that will take audiences through uh, on a journey through space and time like you've never seen before. As for what we need though, Manette and Matt, I let you take it away. Thank you, Ido. Thank you, Daniel. Well, hi, everybody. Um, I'm um, Manette Malewski, and uh, I have the pleasure of being the uh, co-chair of this uh, amazing event. I can't wait, uh, I think, you know, for tomorrow for it to happen. And, uh, and yeah, if we can clone you to sell this to everybody, I think we would have more than enough money to go forward. Um, the movie itself costs about $7.5 million, and we're looking for about $4 million dollars at this point from either sponsors or corporate sponsors or from philanthropists as well. Um, we're very lucky to have Matt, uh, who is really a specialist. He's the executive co-producer of this, and he's a specialist in global entertainment 
and really his ability to put together branding partners along with the creators. I think that's the real piece, that it's entertainment, but on the side that it's cultural and that it's branding and seeing how we can put together the creators with uh, those people who are interested in being involved in the creating. And since Matt is involved on the day-to-day -day operations of this, we both thought that it would be great for him to give you a peek as to uh, what you get for the kind of money we're putting together and uh, how you can help us move this because I think that all children, if we use our imagination, will love this as well as adults. As Daniel said, it opens up our minds. We go through the eyes of Einstein and the Nobel Prize winners, and we get to open up that imagination. And today, we surely need to be more creative, more imaginative, and uh, seeing where the world can bring us to make a better humanity. So Matt, off to you. Thanks, Monette, and thanks, Taryn, and Daniel, and Ito, and, and Hillary. Um, we hope this project has come to excite you as it has us uh, in the potential to celebrate Albert Einstein um, and inspire STEM education, especially in girls. You know, the, our featured characters are certainly remarkable in what they've accomplished and they wanna help um, pay it forward and inspire more girls to follow their path. Um, so at the risk of sounding like a, a public radio telethon, uh, <laughs> the simple fact is we can't complete this project without funding support. And, and as Monette said, there are two primary ways these projects can be funded. Corporations who have aligned brand purpose initiatives and, and then individuals with charitable donations, which of course have, have tax benefits. Um, so for those who might be able to support, especially in the brand world, you know, we've saved what I think as someone, a marketer in my background, uh, what is the best for last, which is there's, this is much more than the exciting film that Daniel took us through. There are so many ways that, uh, that corporate support um, makes the message more complete and impactful, but also there are many ways our corporate supporters and sponsors can activate around their investment. Um, just to remind you, you know, this film runs in a global network of the most iconic museums and science centers worldwide. So just by being associated with a project like this in these environments really transfers just credibility and, um, and legitimacy to those um, brand purpose and corporate social responsibilities initiatives in STEM and education and female empowerment. Um, so this slide you've been looking at are many of the ways that surround the film in those environments. And I'll just touch on a few that I think are, are really unique and compelling. The classroom curriculum piece. So every school group, which makes up a significant portion of the audience, there's a companion workbook that is created by the filmmakers and the subject matter experts. And we've often invited our brand partners who have subject matter expertise to contribute to these documents. So, you know, beyond what they see in the film, it's reinforced through learning that is facilitated and distributed through classrooms, which is pretty remarkable. Of course, the museum experiences themselves, you know, those venues love support to, to bring to life the film that's in the theater, bringing it in as an exhibit. As, as Taryn said, the film itself is often considered an exhibit, but, but we've seen many instances where the power of a physical presence um, that can be um, developed by a sponsor can also complement and enhance what, what's shown in the theater. Um, and then content to commerce is a pretty unique thing. So um, if you are a brand, um, obviously you do a lot of these things for, for ultimately commerce, um, but when your brand purpose and, and commerce can come together, it's pretty special. So, you know, there are gift shops and, um, and often what you see on the screen where you have something relevant to bring into those environments, so for instance, if there's anyone from Mattel, we know you have astrophysicist Barbies that would fit quite well in, in, those, uh, in those areas. And then lastly, um, just touch on premiere and events briefly, because it sounds like you know, a typical item on a, on a deliverable, but there's a lot of interesting ways that this um, can really be of value to, to corporate partners. Um, so for instance, one, they're very um, local and grassroots and high touch moments in these, in these top markets, very experiential. Um, but we've also used them for, for kind of B2B purposes. Just a, a brief example, the Superpower Dogs film that's been mentioned a couple times, when it opened, our, our sponsor, Mars Pet Care, when that opened in Cincinnati, they told us that that was the headquarters of the Kroger supermarket chain, and that's an important customer of theirs. So we created a special VIP screening for the buyers of dog foods to bring their family 
to experience the film. And in doing so, we had the, our avalanche rescue dog arrive by helicopter and long line down to the red carpet to greet um, those, those important customers of, of Mars Pet Care, which, you know, if, if you sell dog food for a living, that's an incredible way to, to connect with your, um, you know, your, your customers. And, and they say, when I see them, they say it still uh, <laughs> resonates to this day. So all that to say is we are definitely going to make a great film and we are going to surround that great film with incredible and inspiring materials and experiences. And yes, today we hope, um, hope this has sparked some excitement or thoughts and we'd love to hear any ideas or referrals to help us connect to companies or individuals that might want to contribute to what we're, what we're building here. So with that, I'll just say, um, I'll reinforce the notion that uh, anything here is possible and we think Einstein would, uh, would commend our imaginative approach. <laughs> Thank you all for everything. It's been a really, really um, entertaining, informative, and interesting session that we had today. So thank you to Taryn, Ido, Daniel, Monette, Matt, and everyone who participated today. And I want to give an extra thank you to Wayne Viner, G100 Chief Technology Officer, and Helen Hatzis, who make it all possible behind the screen. As promised, we have some very terrific new news to share as we wrap up for today. Firstly, we've gone from inaugural to annual. Last year, we launched the inaugural Genius 100 Inspiration Award in partnership with the New York Festival Advertising Awards to honor the most impactful commercial creative work of the year. And as we all know, 2020 was quite a year. Well, we have agreed to make it an annual event and expand the G100 effort within the festival. Submissions for 2021 are eligible on December 1st. Then we have Gift of Sight, Love You More. Last month's G100 webinar focused on the incredible work of G100 visionaries, Drs. Ryut and Tabin, with a special Q&A with Dr. Tabin, co-founder of Himalayan Cataract Project. This month, we are launching in partnership with the jewelry and accessory brand, Love You More, founded by G100 community member, Gabby Gorbani, the gift of sight promotion. With Gabby, we have created a special gift of sight with purchase promotion. With each purchase, funds are donated to cover the cost of a sight saving surgery. Then we move down to South Florida um, where Art Miami starts next week. We're extending a special G100 invitation to the Explore One Fund gathering on Thursday, December 2nd, during Art Week Miami. The Explorer One Fund, very relevant to today's conversation, is a venture capital fund that invests in new space economy, seeking to invest in seed and early stage companies operating in the space sector. And then for next month, on December 9th, our next webinar will be featuring Brett Burns, interviewed by Ido Aharoni, the filmmaker and son of Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee from 2016, Bert Burns, and I believe Brett's on the call today, so hi Brett, if you're, if you're with us. Um, the webinar will be discussing the story of his father's work, his upcoming theatrical and TV releases, and his father's legacy. So a little spoiler alert, Burns wrote iconic songs such as Twist and Shout, Peace of My Heart, I Want Candy, Here Comes the Night, and Hang on Sloopy, and produced hits like Under the Boardwalk, Brown Eyed Girl, and baby, I'm yours. And what's more, he launched the careers of Neil Diamond and Van Morrison. Tragically, he died at 38 with 51 chart toppers. So that's the news I have for today, and I hope you enjoyed our G100 webinar of the month. For more information about anything we discussed today, just please be in touch with either Helen or myself, or go to the G100 website, g100visions.com. Thank you again, and have a wonderful day. <laughs>